Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. And this time we are reviewing a cheap camera. This is the uber inexpensive Panasonic Lumix DMC FH6, which can be had for about $88. So that's really inexpensive for a compact camera. What attracts you to me this camera was two things. One, well, three things, I guess. The price, the fact that at its widest kind of wide angle, it has an aperture of 2.5. So at that wide angle, it's pretty fast, although it does get... Uh, it, that aperture narrows down pretty substantially as you zoom out. The other thing was is that I was so impressed with the LZ200. That was the hybrid um, super zoom camera that I reviewed in an earlier video. And I was just amazed at how good this small sensor technology had gotten by using high quality sensors and good processing and good optics. And I wondered how that would compare with a very inexpensive camera like this? Did it kind of translate to the cheaper ones too? Now this does have a few features, but it's pretty bare bones. Uh, it has a five times optical zoom and you can extend that zoom to a 10 times zoom with a digital type zoom, which they call intelligent zoom. It's, um, it is much better than what they used to have for zooming. It also has a special uh, high ISO feature. Normally the range for this camera goes from 100 to 1600 ISO. Again, those higher ranges, you're not going to expect a very good picture. But if you shrink the size of the image down to 3 megapixels, you can actually get a uh, ISO of 3200 and we'll look at one of those pictures to see if it's worth it. It doesn't have a lot of specialty types of shots. It does have, for instance, black and white and sepia and vivid color, but don't expect things like selective color or toy camera effect or miniature effect. You're just not going to find them in a camera this cheap. There's some very limited photo editing, like resizing the shot, for instance. But here again, don't expect a lot of after editing options on this camera. Um, I think the uh, camera itself worked reasonably well. And so what I think we're going to do now, oh, by the way, the display is, I think, 230 thousand pixels so relatively low resolution display display was okay in bright sun but not in super bright sun um, it was okay basically so let's take a look at some of the pictures and I'll kind of walk you through them we'll also look at a little video that was a low light video so let me get into the right screen and we'll do that right now okay this shows you just the wide angle lens here we are at uh, an ISO of 160, uh, 2.5 f at 1 250th of a second. Second, um, here we move into the five times optical zoom. It's definitely a zoom, but uh, it's not phenomenal. And I'd say these pictures, these first two, kind of have a cell phone look. The leaves don't look particularly defined. Um, it's a little flat looking. Uh, here's my son. I, th I think it's a fine picture. Again, if you look to the right, we have a lot of uh, blown out sky and and all of that. Uh, but not, not bad. Not bad at all. And I think he looks better than a cell phone picture. This is that maple that I showed in an earlier video when I was looking at the LZ200. Now it's completely red. Some of the green has turned red. But here again, I'm looking for fringing. When we do 100% crop, there is some purple fringing along the edges there. And you could see that in other pictures too. Not very objectionable, but it's really there. Here's a close-up of some leaves. I think the color rendition is good and they look quite pleasant indeed. And just for another close-up, here is a close-up of uh, just part of a tree. Again, good definition, better than what I think you would expect with a cell phone. So I thought I would check out the five times optical zoom. And here's a frog that you will recognize from other videos that I've done. This is at five times, but you have the option to do this intelligent zoom, which is like a digital zoom. And that's this here. Now, if you look at this extremely closely, you'll definitely see some uh, degradation. But this intelligent zoom is much, much better than the old style, just blow up the picture kind of a thing. And it really uh, does a pretty fine job and it's very usable, especially for posting. So I took a picture of this house again. And in this particular picture, I think we do have some slight barrel distortion towards the center of the picture. Here again, we're gonna zoom into those 
flower pots at the base of the, the door and we can't get nearly as close as we could with the LZ200 but it did a reasonably good job. Here's another shot that I take all the time and I like this one because it kind of shows off how well the detail is on the camera and I would say it certainly looks fine again not as good as the LZ200. Um, here's a macro shot again very nice job not absolutely crisp but uh, certainly good enough and then over here uh, I wanted to see if the camera could pick up the fact that this was an action shot indeed the camera did this was done at an ISO of 250 and it shot it at 1 400th of a second and it did freeze my son running what it didn't do however is expose him properly it really exposed the whole scene properly but it left him underexposed now of course I could correct that in post-production and I actually did do it but I'm just not showing it here because I don't know if it's pertinent or not here's my favorite bridge again this is at the widest uh, sort of aperture which is uh, the equivalent of 24 millimeters and if we completely zoom into the 5x zoom this is the equivalent of 120 millimeters nice and clear no problem and here again we're going to try that super intelligent digital zoom so now we're technically at a zoom of 240 um, millimeters and I think it looks okay it's fine now this camera has a very effective uh, panorama mode it was very easy to use you can see me standing below uh, taking the picture but I thought it did a fine job and here we go into more of a landscape mode that also looked just fine and no complaints there good detail sky's a little bit blown out I thought I would try out the flash indoors here again a fine job did a good job didn't uh, blow out his face and I thought that worked quite well and then here we move into a non-flash. This is at an ISO of 400 with an F of 4.1. And I'm zoomed into 61 millimeters, so I'm zoomed in a bit. And it worked uh, just fine. So I thought I would check out that super high ISO mode. And this gives you a much smaller file size a much smaller picture and this particular is the uh, picture is at three megapixels it doesn't look too terrible but when you look at it even a little closer up you can see a lot of degradation of the photo and i think it should only be used for emergency use but if you needed to get that shot at a real high iso you could use it it's passable and uh, I think the noise is suppressed reasonably well, although you definitely see some noise too. I also thought I would check out the flaring, and you can see shooting this leaf with the bright sun off to the upper left. Definitely there's some flaring uh, that occurs. Again, not particularly shocking with a camera of this type. So let me get out of this screen. And we're back again. And so overall, the picture quality is good. It cannot match the picture quality of the LZ200, which also has a 1 over 2.3 sensor, but obviously a much more sophisticated sensor and a lot better processing, but not too bad. Definitely better than a cell phone in most of the pictures and as good as a cell phone in a few of the pictures, I, as I kind of pointed out. So let's take a look at a video. The video was shot at 720p, which is the maximum that this camera will shoot at. It has a mono microphone, of course, no mic jack input. And we're gonna do this at low light. It's gonna be my usual piano shot because I think that does a good job at checking out how well the audio works in the camera. So let's take a look at that now.
Okay, there's that video. Not too bad for what the camera is. I, of course, have seen better video from better cameras, but definitely usable if you wanted to post something on YouTube or send a little video message or that sort of a thing for a very inexpensive price. So, would I recommend this camera? I think I would. I think the price point is what really sells it. It's not nearly as sophisticated and the image quality is not as good as some of the higher end compact cameras, even the ones that have the same size sensor. But that's what you would expect at this price point. And I do think it takes pictures better than what you would see with your typical cell phone. So thumbs up for this at its price. But if you wanted to spend a little more, you're definitely going to get a better camera if you kind of go up maybe a hundred bucks or so. Take care and please give my podcast a listen. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. It's on iTunes and other pod catching sites. Bye.